Hello everyone. In this video we're going to look at the features available in the brand new CML Cisco Modeling Labs 2.2.1 release. And you know you're going to be running 2.2.1 uh, when either you install something that says 2.2.1 or you do the upgrade and you come to the login screen and you see the version right here, 2.2.1 and some build identifier. Um, first, I'm going to log in as admin and I'm going to show you some of the new features. So I've got uh, a few labs here uh, and we'll just go into any lab. I guess any lab is going to show off the first thing I want to show you. And that is this uh, new feature called link labels. Um, something that's been asked for quite a bit by our users, and that is all the links now on the topology map within a lab, zoom in a little here, all have a label on them for the interface that, uh, or, or the local side of the link, the local interface of the link um, that pertains to that link. So in this case, uh, router core is connected to router edge on, on router cores gigabit ethernet one, and on router edges gigabit ethernet two. So the link labels are a, a new feature and again, something that has been oft requested from uh, our users. The second feature I'd like to show you is uh, relates to the console. It's actually a, a few features uh, relating to console access. So I'm gonna go ahead and access the console here on router core. I'm gonna open the console and get my uh, console going. Initially, it doesn't look like uh, anything is different, except now you have this settings uh, uh, button over here. And if I click settings, you see there's quite a few things we can do. Uh, one of the things that we can do, and this is enabled by default, but um, I've uh, turned it off uh, for the time being, is I can load on connect. That means, or uh, load history, I should say, on connect. So. Previously, prior to CML 2.2.1, when I would go into a console, uh, if I like reloaded the web page and then I went into the console, I would lose any of the history that might have been there. Um, now what we can do, enabling this and specifying some amount of lines, of previous lines to load, that history will be preserved. So if I needed to come back and see what command I'd previously run, um, I can see that output. So let's take a look at that real quick. So I'll say load on connect 300 lines, and then I'll go into enable mode here and do like a show version. And then I'll do a, a shift reload on the page. Go back over, I'll go to router uh, edge first, open this. You can see, hey, there's history there, um, but I'll go back into router core where we were, open the console, and you can see that the uh, shover output is, is still present. So that is a, a new feature of the, of the console capabilities. The other thing, which is disabled by default, um, is the uh, auto connect. So we'll turn this on. And the reason it was disabled by default is to maintain that principle of least astonishment uh, between uh, the previous versions of CML and this one. But this is kind of nice. So again, I'll shift reload. So now I have auto connect. I'll click on the console and I don't have to click that open console button. As soon as I connect to a console, I'll connect to one I haven't done before. I get the console. I don't have to click anything else. So auto connect. The last console feature I want to show you is the theme. So we can adjust the, the color scheme of the console and we can adjust the default font size. So I'm going to go into, uh, let's go Cisco blue and we'll up the font size a little bit. Uh, and now you can see that I've got a different color console, slightly larger font. Um, I can go and show like a retro one um, and I got that neon green that's that's burning out my eyes. Um, but that is something else that is uh, a new feature. And all of this is persistent in the browser session. So it's using local browser storage um, to maintain these settings. So this is persistent insofar as you're using this browser. So those are the new console features and that's the new link label. The other thing that's really cool that I want to show you and the reason why I have these these uh, three labs, customer A, ISP, and customer B here, 
I want to show you the new capabilities in CML Enterprise, at least, of multi-user capability, the new multi-user and grouping capability that you'll find in uh, CML 2.2.1. So what I've done, I've got this customer A topology. We've just been looking at that. Uh, that connects out to this quote-unquote internet. The internet is an external connectivity uh, just using NAT, really. Uh, it's just using uh, NAT. And I've connected the two customers uh, in my ISP here and so I'll look at the config it's just using this the standard NAT but I'm using that as a rendezvous point between those customers and the ISP so that remember I've got auto connect on on the console so I can do um, a BGP I can act as uh, well actually I'll show uh, uh, actually I believe show IP BGP um, so I've got some uh, peers going uh, over on the um, I've got some peer relationships set up with the customers, so I'm acting as an ISP here. Um, but let's say I was doing this as a learning lab. I've got a customer B network, customer A network, and I wanted to create user accounts uh, for students, and I want them to be able to interact, but I don't necessarily want them to interact with the ISP. The ISP, the instructor set up, that's something that is going to be uh, one instance of that for however many customers I have. So when I go into uh, system administration and into user management, you'll notice this screen looks very different now. I've created a student B user, I've created a student A user, and of course I have admin. And student A and student B are non-administrative users. So we've been able to do that since 2.1, 2.0. We, we've been able to create this. That, that, that isn't, uh, users in and of themselves aren't interesting. What is interesting now is this idea of uh, grouping. So I have a, a, a group called Base Bravo, a group called Base Alpha. Um, and if I look at this, I can assign users to these particular groups. So I have student B in uh, Base Bravo with uh, admin as well. And then I have in Base Alpha, I have, whoop, I have a student A and admin as well. The other thing you notice here is there was a user edit, and then there's also a lab edit. I can assign labs, specific lab instances, to these groups, and I can say that uh, um, users within that group have specific access or have or users, sorry, labs within that group have uh, users have specific access to that, either read only or read write. So those are the those are the permissions they have now, either read only or read write. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So remember, I've created a group called Base Bravo. Base Bravo has customer or student B in there and admin. I'm logged in as admin and I can see all of the labs. Now what I'm going to do is log out and I'm going to log in. First, we'll go A before B. We'll log in as student A. That's the user I've created or one of the users I've created. I can only see the customer A lab. Remember, I had four labs logged in as admin, all said and done, but I can only see the customer A lab because that's the group that I'm in. And when I click on that, I have, you see the topology like I saw before, uh, and then I can say, you know what? I'm going to go in and configure router core. Remember those settings, uh, even though I was logging as admin, I said the settings are on a brow per browser basis. So that's why I still see auto connect and I still see the neon green there. So I'm going to go in, let's say to int, uh, int GI1 and say description. We see via link labels that it goes up to router edge. So I'll just say the description is router edge. And I was able to make that change. I'm able to configure the devices. However, Let's say I, as a student, I'm like, you know what? I really want to add another switch here. I'm going to add, try, oh, I can't do it. The permissions for this group, um, for this lab, were read only. And while admin will be able to make, think of it like the instructor will be able to make those changes, the student, because they are non, they're a non-administrative user, they only have read-only access to this lab. So they can't make any topological changes to the lab. So that's great to be able to say, you can interact with this lab, you can configure things, but this is the topology you're dealing with. There is a little bit of a caveat with that, though. Um, things like uh, packet capture and uh, link conditioning, the student doesn't have, or the 
non-administrative user won't have access to do them. And we're talking about how we can make these permissions a little bit more finer grained to allow for things like that, but just be aware. So those are the new features, the big new features that you'll find in, in Cisco Modeling Labs 2.2.1. Remember, it's the uh, grouping, the ability to group and, and allow shared labs across groups. There's the link labels that you're seeing here, and there is the console theming, the auto connect, and the console history. There's a lot additional behind the scenes that you're not going to see in terms of bug fixes, stability improvements um, that, that you'll, I'm sure sure you will appreciate in using the product, but those are the main uh, visual things that you'll see and the things that we hope you'll enjoy. Thanks very much.